I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Cassa sails the deep as the oceans night. Her guns light up the dark and intense fierce fight. Torpedoes locked and loaded, ready to strike. Silent through the waves, swift like a kite. Under radar's gaze, she maneuvers with grace. With her speed, she vanishes without a trace. Pride of France on high, her flag waves. Focus on the seas, defender, brave and cold. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Yet a fun video talking about the Cassard or Cassard or Cassard or how do you ever pronounce it? It's the French destroyer that finishes out the torpedo line. Kind of outside of that, uh, the release that was, was it the pre-release or pre-order, whatever you want to call it, has now been two patch cycles now and it's finally available. available for everybody out there to research and try to grind and get for the tier 10 tech tree line of the French destroyer rolls. So as always, uh, before we get in, like, subscribe, button below, appreciate all the support. If you see value in the channel, uh, let me know and in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your support. At 4,000 subs, we're gonna do another premium giveaway. So let's get right to it. This is a video about my thoughts on it and we're just gonna do just really just the, the replays that I did with it. How did I uh, feel in it? And just kind of my reaction as I'm watching the video in the background, as you can see right here. So what is it again, Tier 10, as we take on the Cabrofs here, which is, I don't think it's a smart move because the Cabrofs is one of my favorite gunboats out there. And according to everything I'm reading online, the Tier 10 Cassard is not a very good gunboat, not a very good open water gunboat. It Look at the angles that I'm doing right here. I, I can't even get the third turret on with the angles I'm doing right now, and I have to run away. And I've only got two guns in the back that have the lofty uh, arc, uh, shell arc angles. And they're, they're kind of like Marceau kind of guns, really. And if you take a look at the gander at what the guns are, 800 meters per second coming out of the barrel, so kind of pretty slow there, 21 millimeter, not, you know, standard pen, everything like that, 1,900 damage. So not the greatest of guns. Uh, that I would say, you know, it's, again, similar like the Marceau. Ooh, now get a nice torpedo there. That is what you're seeing right there in the background is that torpedo uh, lethality that the this is again that french torpedo destroyer role is supposed to be doing uh because and look we're getting more torpedo hits right there so just oh boom look at that heart man i did not expect that tier eight harbin goes down so sorry for you right there and right what you right there what you just saw is the power of just sums it up right there of what this french tech tree line is really just the the bread and butter what it's designed for and it's not a gunboat it's not uh designed for that reason it can't it can defend itself somewhat but you saw right there against the cabros won't even match against a fight on it so don't even try don't even try to match against the cabros but what you saw that the damage it did with the torpedoes right off the bat right there is what it was designed for and again that's pretty much sums it up right there. Uh, it still has a French saturation. It's a tier 10, you know, uh, basic hole, 24,000 HP, a little bit more, uh, I, I guess you could say, than the standard, say, like gearings or Shimakaze. So, and, I, and if I had to sum it up, this plays kind of like my gearing play style. So if, for those of you who don't know, the tier 10 USS uh, gearing, which is the tech, the tech tree line kind of uh, hybrid of torpedo and gunboat roll, the uh, gearing, in my personal opinion, is the USS uh, United States torpedo gun, uh, torpedo destroyer uh, that really uh, matches that in a role very, very well. I think Kassar plays similar to my gameplay style for gearing, if I had to sum it up. The concealment is not as great as the gearing, obviously. You can get down, the gearing obviously you can get down to like 5.6 Shemikaze styles or 5.9 if you build for it. But look at the tier 10 Kassar. Right off the bat, you can see 6.1 con uh, detection concealment. So not bad, but I mean, it's decent for what it's supposed to do. And ooh, look at this. Will I be able to take him on? Oh, 43,000 right there with four torpedo hits. So right off the bat devastating strike you can see what kind of damage that thing can do right there with the torpedoes now the cool thing i like about the torpedoes is they go out to 13 and a half kilometers which is phenomenal i mean that is almost kind of like what you want like it even goes to the um what is the pan pan asian destroyer the range uh, that you have in the yu yang you have ranges uh that's not as much as gearing or shimikaze style but decent enough where 13 and a half is very very comfortable for what you know how to do 
is pretty much double your concealment. So if I you can double your concealment right there and get torpedo effectiveness, I think that's very, very good. Now, why did earlier did I say it plays like a gearing? Now, again, like I said, concealment is not great, but the, it has better HP, of course. The speed is that of a gearing, and then that's the downside of this. Most Everybody thinks that, you know, obviously, what is it? French cruiser, a French destroyer line is supposed to be one of the fastest destroyers out there, right? You're talking about Mogador, Kleber, Marceau, some of the fastest destroyers in the game. Uh, unfortunately, Cassard is not. You can see right now, I can only do about 34, 35 ish knots. And, but what does have the engine boost consumable at the bottom, as you can see right here, you can get plus 30% maximum speed for 90 seconds. If you want to build for longer, you can. And okay, here's an example of the gunboat roll right here. Take a look, and you guys let me know your thoughts on it. I did build it for somewhat of a gunboat build, just to try to get as much DPM as I could out of it. Uh, for what I can. I didn't take Fearless Brawler on this one. I was trying to focus on the torpedoes as a recommended build, but you'll see the build at the end of the screen. And right here, we're going against Arraj, our counterpart right here. So this is kind of a fair match because we're kind of similar ships. Um, really, the DPM is kind of similar. Nothing too fancy, nothing too great. If this was a Cabras, I definitely would have lost this battle. But you can see, look at the kind of slow pace kind of gunboat it's there the guns are there it does the basics kind of like a gearing right the gearing has the three sets of turrets um double barrel and that's it you can only get so much dpm out of them for what you can do it's not designed to sit there and brawl or you know take on heavy gunboat destroyers or it doesn't even have smoke to do anything like that of that and in that requirement or that nature and look we're still a big uh, destroyer we we are i would say fairly decent to easy to hit and uh we, we're high above the water and look People are still getting hits on us right there. We're taking damage. Now, the cool thing is it still has that French saturation, which I do like. For those of you who don't know what the French saturation is, you can see it building up on the ship. It's just a sl If I had to sum it up, it's a slow rate of damage you can put on me. So if I was an opposing destroyer, as soon as I saturate a section of your uh, ship, then destroy all those HP points, my guns have been effectively been nerfed, so I don't do as much damage as I would, say, another destroyer uh, uh, that is a different brand and different uh, category. And it still has that friend saturation, so it takes longer for uh, certain destroyers with smaller caliber guns or whatnot to destroy me. And that's like, it's really frustrating to go against French destroyers for that reason. Not that it, may, it doesn't make them invulnerable, it just takes a little bit longer because your shells are doing less damage, kind of like inflation. You, you want to think of it that way. Uh, the inflation of your shells has just gone down, 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 down. And uh, the more and more shells you put into it, it is required in order to take out uh, a French destroyer. But again, that, that I digress. It's not really what I like to, the selling point of the French destroyer line. Really, I thought that. Hey, Hey, you could have a fast torpedo boat uh, or gun, or sorry, to fast torpedo destroyer that would allow me to do these sneak attack runs or kind of be that annoying pestering force on the flank. Uh, it really, again, it acts just like a gearing in my personal opinion, how I play it. Because I'm not building this thing for the guns. I'm not going out there hunting destroyers down. I'm not there to uh, sit on one -on one and go for that long brawling and uh, farm HP damage or HE damage. Really, it, this thing is designed, in my personal opinion, like a gearing where I'm just sitting there spotting, capping, and just kind of standing, being a standoff roll so that I, I can use the torpedoes and uh, maximize damage that way. Right there, you can see I helped out with trying to destroy the uh, destroyer. And let's see if we can get the Cabra officer. Now, I can pick a Cabra officer fight easily here because he's down at, what, 1,700 health. I think this would be safe engagement, not bad. But look how lofty those shells are. Yeah, really wonky. And, yeah, it's not... They're doable, but I don't like them. I don't like the the way they, they react or act or whatever it is coming out of the barrel. I like faster, hard-hitting guns, so that's my personal opinion on that. Again, as you saw right there, it's same gameplay style as the gearing. Uh, stay concealed as much as you can okay, because you don't have that smoke, and, of course, you don't have that concealment. But the cool thing, I think what this thing, again, what is designed for was the torpedoes. 13 and a half kilometers, really great distance. And, of course, the, uh, the other gimmick about this is, and I'll highlight it for you, is the torpedoes are uh, range damage so the the further out it goes kind of think of that submarine style gameplay the further out it goes um it, it does less and less damage so the goal is to launch the tor these torpedoes as close as possible to maximize damage i believe the magic number is eight kilometers so as the um as you get closer to a target, eight kilometers below, I believe they do do the maximum damage of about 24,267. After eight kilometers, I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, from what I'm hearing and reading, uh, it, is, it, tape, it starts tapering off and reducing that amount of damage the further out it goes. So at, even at 13 and a half kilometers, which I've seen, I haven't seen too many, but I've seen a couple, they do still a, a decent amount of damage. I'm not saying they're weak in any regard at max range, but they are not doing the 24,000 as, as you can see right on the screen there. 
but it's still a lot of damage. And look how fast they go. 76 knots, you can build for them a little faster. I elected not to. Uh, I think 76 is decent enough. And um, I mean, what's the reaction time again? You're getting 7.4 seconds, which is the, an average uh, the time that I've seen that is pretty darn hard to dodge. So they just pop out of nowhere and you got seven seconds to figure this out. So uh, you're gonna see uh, right here, um, Let's see if I can get a couple targets. Look at the max range here. Let's see what kind of damage it does. So almost seven. Oh, never mind. Yeah, right there, about 19,000. So we launched those things way out in the distance, and they finally arrived at the target. Uh, even though the, the ship is seven kilometers from me now, it's actually, I think, based on the distance you launched them from. So how long did it, did it travel? And that's what the, the algorithm is used to take in account for how much damage it's supposed to do. 113,000. This is my first game in the Kassar, by the way. Two kills, 113,000 damage. Not bad, right? So... Um, let's take another look at the video uh, of, of um, just more gameplay video to see what my thoughts are and how what kind of engagements I'm running into. All right, so here's another map, Crash on Alpha with Kassar. Again, my this is my second game in it, and uh, you're just kind of seeing my initial reactions to it, how my basic gameplay style, as well as getting tips on you know how to be a good destroyer player. Uh, we're gonna do another video on tips of becoming a uh, just focusing on that, uh, what we can do uh, to be that uh, that shorter player that is effective and uh, helpful for your team. So again, uh, as I'm talking through this video, we're gonna talk about the star, how it plays, how I play it, and how how using a ship like this, and may, again, eventually other uh, destroyers, how to be a good destroyer player to be effective and useful in your team, especially just for randoms or just improve your gameplay and ranked. Uh, clan battles is another beast. I am not the expert on that. You gotta watch some of these other guys that are in um, you know clan battles. There way good and king of the seas i am not in any of that i'm literally just the average player that just loves a shorter uh role gameplay and i'm just i'm just repeating the tips that i've heard from other youtubers as well as other players that i've uh, observed and and watched and read about and kind of just regurgitating the basic mindset and principles and tactics techniques and procedures for it so uh right now uh right off the bat kasar what is it good for right here a 6.1 concealment which is okay it's not the best but it's the kind of middle average ground which i think is still good and it's not designed for that gun boat uh brawling kind of mentality to hunter uh, destroy hunter killer it doesn't have the guns for it. we already talked about that the rpf that i've built for this is for situational awareness only because it allows me to figure out where's the threat and what am i looking at keep the guns pointed in that direction the 180 turn times on these guns are pretty slow as well. I don't I don't like them. I wish they were a little faster. I, I do prefer gunboat destroyers that are a little faster turret radius. There's a submarine. No. Why do I not shoot at it? Because as soon as he... I know he's going to go underwater. As soon as I shoot, my, my uh, guns have to wait 20 seconds before they go make me go undetected, right? So I see he went underwater. He can't see me anymore. I stay concealed. That's why I don't fire in submarines anymore. So that's another good technique, tactic, and procedure for you guys if you want to take that and put that in your uh, bag of tools. Uh, but basically, that is why I like the concealment and not shooting at uh, submarines because, look, he's underwater. He can't see me anyways. You know, it's better for me to stay hidden as well. So, and I, I know I wouldn't have won that battle anyways. As soon as I shoot one or two shells, it, yeah, it damages him, but it's not going to do enough damage, lasting damage to affect anything. So, and look, he's underwater. He can't cap. I'm going to cap this spot for me as well. Now, I did spot the other destroyer right there. Now, I'm not going to go against a 34,000 HP uh, Elbing right there who's got big, accurate guns. His guns go, look, how, look at the trajectory of his guns right there. His guns were way lower and came out of the barrel way faster than me, and my shells took for an eternity to get there. So you can see the down, the downside and the disadvantage I'm at right now. And also he has support. Again, I don't know why my ships never support me. I don't know. That that's another thing that cruiser battleship players look at. You're in the back here. You're not helping your destroyer out. You don't do much as well. So I, I do do not like that aspect of World of Warships where it's designed to be a class role system, which people don't play the role that they're in the class for. So. Uh, we'll talk about that. I think Sea Lord Mountbatten did a video that explained that very thing. I'll do one as myself to address that situation, but I digress. Let's talk about the Kassar again. How to be a good destroyer player. So I'm still lingering in the area to spot to become a threat to the enemy destroyer as well to the enemy team with my torpedoes. I'm also there to re-engage the cap as well and also maybe to throw it off some submarine gameplay as well. We are not designed to kill submarines even though that is what destroyers were designed for was to be anti-submarine weapon systems but they don't work that way in World of Warships because you got to drive over top of target which how often do people do that even in real warfare, right? You know, I don't drive my airplane right over somebody just to blow myself up over somebody or in, just reveal my position to somebody just so I can get a shot at and hope I can hit a submarine, which, again, I can't see because I don't have any uh, hydroacoustic or anything on this destroyer to allow that. Again, that, that's me just hating on submarines. I'm not going to make that video about that or make this video about that. So, again, let's go back. 
look at the guitar speed right now. I'm maxed out about 36-ish knots, and I haven't even used the engine boost yet. So on the engine boost does allow me to get up to about 46 knots, which is still slower than the most of the Tier 10 uh, French Destroyers. So the speed is, again, not to my liking, but it is there when you need it for 46 knots. That's okay. It still plays like a gearing. Now, this, if I was in a gearing, I, I see no difference of how I would play the gearing in this thing because, look, I'm just loitering around the area, spotting for my team. That spotting is crucial because it allows my enemy team to shoot at something. You can't shoot what you can't see. That's the one aspect of it. I still have torpedoes. I'd reach out to 13 and a half kilometers, which, again, is similar to the style of gearing where I'm using long-range torpedoes to go out there and reach and touch somebody. The torpedoes do smack uh, a lot. of you saw the previous video and even in some of this in this video, they do hit the targets pretty decently and well. They hit them pretty hard. Uh, even closer is better. Again, that is your um, decision if you want to play that more riskier close in. In the age of radar and everything, that could be an issue. But again, you just got to know where the enemy radar cruisers are at. That is a good technique to figure out. What do I do as I hit the tab button? Figure out where are the uh, the guys that have radar is highlight over it and look. Oh, this guy Wooster. But based on my experience, I know Woosters have radar. So just learn the game. I know it takes a PhD level to play this game nowadays, but this is a good way to figure out if you don't know what it is. Hit tab, highlight the thing. Oh, he's at radar. What's the radar go range? It's 8.5 kilometers. Okay, now I know the threat. There's also an Aslanes mod that you see right there. The Wooster pops up a yellow circle around it. That is an Aslane mod that I um, I loaded so that I can see the range of the radar on the mini map so I can have a quicker situational awareness. Like I said, when I teach my uh, young pilots, uh, instructors, and everything like that, I always say, hey, sight um, uh, go, travels faster than brain of thought. So uh, you can see things a lot faster than you can sit there and compute. Wait, what's 10 kilometers? Okay, now what's 10 kilometers in relation to me? Where's 10 kilometers? No, you can just look at the mini map. Boom, I already know what it is. I already have situational awareness. I can focus back on re-engaging the battle, right? there so that's what i teach my pilot my young pilots and everything like that as well sight travels faster than thought all right let's go back to uh Kassar gameplay right here so uh, my goal right now is to go back and test alpha oh, why why i always want to keep pushing the threat to the enemy now okay here here's the engine boost right there boosting that up Ooh, good maneuverability decent maneuverability now if those are holland torpedoes i definitely would have taken one but you can see torpedoes fast enough and react to them. It's still maneuverable um, for what it needs to do. So I do like the aspect of the Kassar. That way it is very maneuverable, very decent. Now I'm going to engage a submarine because I think I can hit. Again, I don't like the guns, even though the reload do 2.8-ish sections. Decent reload rate. Again, I don't like the the way the guns handle for some reason. It just feels weird, wonky, and I'm missing a lot of my shots. So not the most accurate guns, slow guns, lofty arcs. So as you can see right there, not built. And again, everything I've read is saying the Cassard is not a gunboat main or a DD hunter killer. It is not that at all, really. Again, it focuses on that torpedo gameplay style. If you want to play the gunboat style, recommend doing the Kleber long range or the Marceau uh, built for the just full gunboat reload, which Marceau still holds the king throne of having the most DPM for destroyer in the game as of right now. Uh, unless something thing changed that I don't know about. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So right there. But the reload on the torpedoes is also bad because I've noticed, look at the reloads. It, the base reload is about 120 seconds plus-ish, so you got two-minute reloads if you don't build for it. So if you don't build for any kind of reload on the torpedoes, it's about two-minute reload. So even if you build for reload, it only gets it down to about a minute and a half, about 90-ish seconds maybe, something around that range. And even 90 seconds is long to me. I'd be to say like you can build the gearing down to me, almost minute reloads. Uh, Kleber even has even faster reloads, but the range is not there. So... Again, this is that balance between uh, the gearing gameplay style matched with kind of that Kleber uh, mentality of French saturation. So, again, it still plays like a gearing in my mind. The, the torpedo reload just not there. If you want to play for fast reloading torpedoes, play a Jaeger or play the Holland, which is, I think, the premier torpedo, fast fast torpedo reloads. Uh, and especially if you have Benham out there as well, that is a machine gun bug, uh, torpedo reload. So those are the kind of... Torpedo gun or sorry, torpedo destroyers that have the better reloads. But as you can see right here, even with building for a slight reload in the torpedoes, it it doesn't seem like it's really you know. I'm, am I getting much out of a 90 second to a two minute reload? I don't see really an impactful uh, you know like time limit there. Now, if the reloads were down to like 59 seconds, like a club air. Okay, maybe it does seem worth it to build for the reloads. I'll try another video with the reload, just focusing on torpedoes. But again, 
I want to have a 2.8. Like you can see right here, I have 2.8 second reloads on the guns. I built it for it that way. Why? Because in case I am detected by a destroyer and I have to engage a destroyer close up, then I have the gunpowder to actually fend off or defend myself. Uh, torpedoes won't defend you alone. So I got to have something to defend me with. So I always opted for having a fast reload, even in the gearing. I opted to, in mod, the, the slot mod six, or sorry, slot six of the modifications, I elected to have a faster gun because they're more consistent and I need it for defense. And of course, I can wait an extra 12 seconds. It's not going to kill me for unless taking a, gun, a torpedo reload is what you really enjoy. That's how you play it. For me, I don't see the benefit of having an extra 12 seconds in torpedo reload because of the advent of hydro and everybody's spotting torpedoes out in the distance anyways. I can wait 12 seconds. I don't think it really changes the game, but having a faster gun reload, that extra DPM gun power on consistent weapon systems like guns, uh, I think that's a little bit better for my play style, uh, especially when I'm up close and personal against these destroyers, especially this Elbing right here, which I may need that extra gun power because I may have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him when he's low health. So I, I'd opt for that. Now, here are the torpedoes right here launching right out of Wisconsin at 8.3. So obviously the closer in again, let's see the, uh, the, uh, the effectiveness of how close in these torpedoes do they range from damage at certain distances so the closer in more damage so let's see what these torpedoes do right there 14,000 oh boom he goes down like I said th these are hard hitting they they do um, even though they do less damage than I would say like Shimakaze and gearing destroyers they are still there and they can still do the amount of damage that's required to take down like for say battleships or cruisers and so it now, here we go with the reload. I only get the two back guns working here, but those are enough with the 2.8 second reload to at least dish out somewhat of a damage to cause this Elbing to run away rather than engage us. See, his gun turrets are slowly turning. He's now popping smoke. We don't have smoke now, so someone's spotting us for him. Oh, wait, no, we go undetected. Thank God we didn't get seen by the aggro right there. The aggro is also shooting us right, or shooting us at right there. So my, what is my thought process? I already got the cap. I don't need to push the Elbing. He's definitely outguns me. So I'm gonna just gonna wait and see where this battle kind of plays out. Waiting for my Jaeger uh, for support. My Vermont's also in support as well. How do we become a good destroyer player in this situation? Again, just be that annoying threat that is consistently just guarding the cap, spotting for your team, spotting that Woozer so Vermont can take a shot at it. I'm also launching torpedoes to pre continuously put pressure on the Elbing or the enemy destroyer. Again, your role as a destroyer player is to put pressure on the enemy destroyers because, again, the destroyer player is the crucial component to maximizing probability of winning the game. Right there, you can see I'm doing a widespread. I'm just getting random torpedoes that push this guy out. I have support from the Jaeger. He doesn't have really good guns, but, hey, more guns. More guns than less is better for me. So I have two versus one right there. So let's see. He got his torpedoes off. Again, I'm being that unpredictable weaving in and out. He's to my right. I can see my guns are facing that way with the RPF indication right there. As you can see, keep the guns pointed in the direction of the threat. And right there. Okay, let's take a look. at Can we take out an 8,000 HP uh, Elbing right here? So let's see. The guns don't really pack much of a punch. 314. Not too, too much damage right there. You can see the torpedoes are causing him to maneuver in such a way that causes difficulty for him. So let's see if we can get the guns to bear on him. Very difficult to see, man. They're not the most... Ah, man, it's something about these guns. I, I just don't like it. Like them. I, I, I just prefer having the, you know, I don't know why we couldn't just add another set of guns on this thing, like a Marceau. Make this thing look like a Marceau, have four turrets, and then torpedoes. What's the big deal, okay? It's just longer-range torpedoes. So and then they'll argue, like, oh, it's just another Marceau with longer-range torpedoes. And like, okay, so what? It's that sell the game, right? Uh, but anyways, I digress. So you can see right there the gameplay style that, you know, for me, how do I how I'm playing this? Uh, it, again, it just feels like a gearing, uh, just a little bit faster speed and poor concealment. So, I mean, that's me. Would I recommend the ship? I mean, absolutely. I've had a lot of fun in it, just like I'm playing the gearing. This is kind of like French gearing kind of play style to me. Uh, it, it really is just going around, do the objectives, capping, spotting, uh, torping, a lot of torping. Uh, the AA on this thing is eh, eh, whatever. I mean, AA is trash and all, all types of destroyers these days. Uh, the engine boost, if this thing didn't have engine boost, this thing would be trash. But because it has the engine boost, I think it does allow it to be somewhat versatile and uh, lethal. Uh, because it does allow you to escape. It does allow you to pursue. It, it does allow you to get in situations where you would like to be or, and also do these sneak torpedo kind of runs if nobody has radar. Here's, a, here's a, an example of the AA right here. What are your thoughts on it? I mean... Yay, I mean, torpedo. I shot down one plane. Again, it's just that standard French. French AA is all trash anyways, except maybe for Marceau with that defensive AA. But even then, what are you going to do against a Nakamov or a Malta or something that just, like, right here, this Malta here. 
just constant we're just not doing nothing to it it's like we're scratching the paint on their planes and they got repair parties on top of their planes which is hilarious they know you could repair planes in flight right um anyways i digress see we're still taking damage here from long range spamming from woosters and i mean it's it's not hard to hit this thing i mean it just seems bulky and large uh, again, it maneuvers fine. It's just similar to that kind of, uh, like, again, I, that, that gearing play style in my mind. I don't know. It's just something about it. Uh, it feels just like it, the same play style. I'm spotting, I'm torping, and doing whatever I can to just be that nu consistent nuisance in an area and objective. And, uh, yeah, there goes the game right there. So, uh, 38,000 damage, not too, too much. We took a lot of potential damage, though. A lot of people were shooting us, so I do, I do give it that. Let's take another uh, look at uh, some more gameplay and see how it goes. All right, here's another game, Crash Zone Alpha again. Uh, this time from the northern aspect of it now, we're at the Charlie sector, so let's take a look at how we go. And again, uh, again let me know what your comments are, what do you think about it as well throughout the, the video. Uh, and again, my take on how it plays, how it feels, and also learning how to be a good destroyer player at the same time. So let's see what kind of experiences I've had and what you see as well. And and yeah, again, always we're always learning here and doing a great thing. So I like pairing up with another destroyer as well. There's another good tip. Find a destroyer player that, you know, most of the time people are on their own. I don't like doing that. I actually like working together. So I actually, regardless of whether you like it or not, I'm going to find a destroyer player and hang with them and become their wingman and help them out and keep them safe. Because I always find that if I keep my destroyer player alive, even as a destroyer, if I keep my fellow destroyer player alive, we have a most likely a better odds of winning than me losing a battleship or a cruiser or whatever. I'd rather keep a destroyer player alive. So let's say right out the bat, we notice that somebody's in the cap at Charlie. We'll stop the caps momentarily right there. I'm already looking at the threat where he's at. I'm also pinging the radar mini map, telling my team where he's at. So that way they have a good idea of like, hey, this is where the threat is. And keep eyes on in that sector. I'm not going to push the objective again. Why do I not do that? Because a Cassard is not a gunboat destroyer main. It is not designed for that. A C, if I'd revealed myself, I would have gotten slapped by that Venezia. That's why I don't do that. Now, there's our counterpart, the Club Air. He's got 25,900 HP. Obviously, a little bit more than we do. He has better guns. He has more guns, by that, that is, that pack a heavier punch and a reload booster. We don't have that, so therefore, I cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Club Air. However... We do have the torpedoes that reach out a little bit further than he does. So let's take a look. What are the torpedo? Whoa, what just happened right there? Holy crap. Let me take a pause right here. Did you guys see what just happened? Right there, I launched. I just launched preemptive torpedoes. And this is why I believe the, the I'm sorry, the Cassard is such a, such a powerful destroyer or torpedo destroyer, killer, whatever you want to call it that. It literally, these torpedoes just sneak up on you. I've been having so many of these devastating strikes um, because these things, man, when, they, when they're coming at you at 76 knots, you have seven seconds re to react to them, and they're packing about 24,000 uh, HP that, that taper down, and you've got six of them coming at you on each side. So we could launch a literally a total of 12, and, man, I might have to build for higher reloads on this thing. You notice that my, my reload time right now is a minute 20, uh, sorry, 120 seconds, which is two minutes. Two minutes to reload on these torpedoes for base build. So you can get these down to maybe 90 seconds, right? So if you build for full torpedo reload, 90 seconds is not the greatest to me. It's kind of along the lines of, you know, basic tor basic torpedo reloads, right? But Holland, I mean, and Jaeger, they're getting them down to almost minute reloads. Do I think it's worth it? The extra 30 seconds or just building to get an extra 30 seconds off? I don't know. You let me know what you think of. I may have to do that because I've noticed I'm getting way, way more kills. And again, that's probably what Wargaming wanted was to have this thing be that torpedo roll. So let's take a look at how we go against the uh, Club Bear here. Okay, guns do do somewhat damage. Uh, again, not the greatest. Look, his shells are coming at me way faster. They're getting there faster to the target. Again, now I have to turn away because he knows he's got his reload booster going. I'm just aiming to get just chip damage right here and just running away. I am not going to stick around for this fight. I need to conserve as much HP as possible. Uh, maybe I'm kind of like this gearing roll where I'm trying to bait the Club Air to fire at me. So that way other ships will fire at him. And he look, he's in disengaging right now. Um, but he, again, he doesn't have a health or heal like we do either. Ooh, ouch. We took a shot from him. And that's a good thing we went slim profile there. Again, we also can still reach out and touch these guys. Club Air torpedoes do not reach out this far. So we can have the threat of actually launching torpedoes that go out both sides and can go out there and reach the Venezia and Club Air that could somehow unsuspectingly kill this guy. So again, right there you saw what kind of engagement. Well, you saw that really that moment of engaging another Tier 10 gunboat destroyer. What are your thoughts on that? Do you like that? Do you not like that? Again, that was... Just me doing a basic engage engagement that just hit and run tactic of just getting in and getting out there and moving along. I had plenty of support, so obviously 
Claber did not stick around and want to play with that. Again, I would not. Ooh, could I get the hit on this? Uh, no, they ran out. So, yep. The, again, if had those been gearing torpedoes, I would have still gone further and reached out. But again, I think 13 and a half is pretty comfortable for, for what we need to do right there. All right, so what are we doing as a good destroyer player? We're going out there spotting for our team. We're going out there and capping for our team. Right here, we're going to be at capping point. We've kept our RPF and guns facing in the direction of the threat. I like RPF because it will tell me that there's somebody else in front of me or to my right that I'm not looking at, my vulnerable weak side. But right now, I'm focused on where RPF is located at. So good thing is it tells me Venezia is the only close guy to me right at this moment which means I can keep my guns to bear and torpedoes aimed in this direction. And I kind of have a sense of where they're going. They're probably running away and there's nothing I can do. So let's speed it up. Launching a couple more torpedoes out in the distance there. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, look, similar kind of gearing play style. I'm, I out detect majority, I out detect the club air. I know that. So I'm not going to pick a fight, but I can spot him first. Kind of like that gearing uh, kind of play style. Even Shimakaze, if you want to call it that. Don't have to play with guns like the Shimakaze does. Again, I'm guarding the Shima, keeping him alive. Although my guns are a little bit better than Shima, I did, still don't think I can use them against any kind of threat that's out here. Unless I'm a, a low health destroyer in the long haul reveals himself, that's when the guns come into play, in my personal opinion. So I'm really not picking a lot of gunfights I've noticed in Kassard. And it's, it's, again, it's this whole stay in concealment, launch from distance, count as that standoffish role, and then only open up when I really need to or blast somebody if I know I can win that engagement. Again, basic destroyer gameplay role, right? Kind of basic tactics. Okay, here we go. We got a daring full health. We're gonna, we got a Shimakaze. We're not afraid. We can take two guy, two versus one. This should be an easy gunfight, right? So let's take a look at what the guns can do against that full health gearing here. All right, we get a couple shots on target. Again, bad angles. I mean, I wish I have to expose a lot of the, the uh, angle of my ship to expose myself to get that third turret on board. Yeah, online, let's see here. I'm spotted right now, which is bad because now he's inside of you know, smokes and I can't hit, I can't see him. He can see me, so that's bad. So we're gonna stop firing now. You notice I have the indicator up here, it tells me how long the last time I fired. From 20 seconds down, I gotta get this thing down to zero seconds. So I, then I go undetected. There's one, zero. I go undetected. Now I'm hidden. Again, very difficult for other destroyers that are non French to hit us or destroy us because, again, we have that French saturation, which basically is, just slows the rate of d damage that someone can do on us. And uh, we're going to see if we can take out, okay, 1500 damage. We can see if we can take on this guy. Ooh, not, torpedoes look really good, by the way. They're going really fast. He spots them with his hydro. He's probably running away at this point. Notice, look at the wonkiness of the shells. Very difficult to lead, very hard to shoot these lofty shells. Man, is it, man, I, I just don't feel comfortable with them. Again, I don't think this is a good uh, gunboat destroyer at all. They're there just for show, honestly, to scare off somebody, but that's it for my personal opinion. If someone had to go against Gassard as a gunboat destroyer, I would not have any fearful thought about it. I wouldn't think twice. Kleber and Marceau, on the other end, I would, so that, that's my thought on it. Okay, we scared off the Daring. We did our job as a destroyer. We capped. We spotted. We destroyed. Ooh, he's almost dead. See, th these are the moments I would open fire with. When someone's about to die, why not? All right, let's take a look at what else are we doing over here. So, again, going to the threat. I mean, uh, where are we needed? It is, again, very slow destroyer. 36 notch is standard for uh, basic destroyers here. So nothing too special, too gimmicky here. Going to go ahead and down to Alpha, spot for our team, and gonna launch a couple friendly tor or fun torpedoes. Again, we didn't get time to do that. We already won this game. Let's take a look at another video. I, don't, I think that one kind of demonstrated the basics of just that surprise torpedo attack. Let's take another look at the um, the last video here, my fourth game play to see how we did. All right, here is our final game right here, my fourth game in it, and man, I have I've had her blast in this thing. It's actually you know for four the first four games of playing this ship, uh, it's been really a blast and it's, it's so fun. Uh, what, so what are my recommendations? If you have made it this far in the video, thank you for your support. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate everything you guys have done uh, to support us and uh, building this channel and just making this a great hobby of mine and having a blast doing it. Um, so what are my thoughts on this? TLDR, I like the ship. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. Uh, what play style is this for me? Uh, that stealth torpedo gunboat, gun, or sorry, stealth torpedo destroyer. I keep saying gunboat and place of destroyer. I don't know why I keep saying that. It is a stealth kind of torpedo-ish kind of style of play. I, it's, like, it's like a gearing, honestly, to me. I, I play the gearing exactly like this. The only difference is it doesn't have the smoke, but for with the smoke, it makes up for it with the French saturation and the speed. That's my thought on it. That's your defensive measures of running away, of getting away from the threat is, and for the gearing in my perspective was running away and, and, um, and uh, smoking up, right? For this one, it's that French saturation when you take reduced damage uh, from other uh, players uh, quickly. And of course, you can always get out of dodge with the engine boost that lasts a decent amount of time. And of course, the torpedoes reload a little, 
good than not as fast as gearing. You can build gearing down, especially a drone launch coming in. You can get it down almost a minute reload, um, I've noticed. But uh, with this, 90 seconds to, if you adrenaline rush kicks in, you can maybe get close to that minute mark. I, I would rather have a minute reloads on these things. But again, it plays a unique torpedo role because it allows you to do uh, different types of ranges. So for example, if you want to just stay way far away from your threat and just shoot them and reach out to 13 and a half kilometers, you can. Or if you want to play that kind of that uh, hit and run tactic of save your en engine boost and then rush an opponent, rush a battleship or anything, you can do that as well because up close and personal these torpedoes pack a wallop i believe you could almost take out a battleship single-handedly if you rushed and took both sets of racks on both sides i think you could do it do i recommend it it's up to you i i don't uh honestly it's the amount of firepower uh, that is surrounding battleships and everything i don't see too many yolos without having smoke like for example Apollo emilio you could do it in that thing um, but with hydro and uh, radar at tier 10, it's very, very difficult. So again, I don't find myself doing a lot of those YOLO kind of rush a guy with these heavy hitting torpedoes up close and personal. I think it's more of this mid to long range torpedo roll where these torpedoes are really packing a punch and really coming at you fast, 76 knots and higher if you want to build for it. And again, look what I'm doing. I'm just playing this kind of loitering uh, hold the cap. Look, I'm the only one over here with the Richelieu. Richelieu is out of game. Like he, look, look where the Richelieu is. I don't know how much effectiveness he can be for me. He's got the front turret guns basically, but what can he do really? Just sitting there. I'm the only one over here. You see that? I mean, but it can effectively hold a flank if you play it correctly, just like a gearing would. Just being that new, annoying nuisance of a torpedo threat. Again, you can spot. That's all I'm doing right here. I'm just sitting here in the cap waiting for somebody to pop out, spotting anybody I can, providing a platform for my teammates to eventually come over and help me. So again, I'm just delaying the cap, holding my ground. I got my RPF located and where he's, uh, the Hayate's at. Hayate, I believe, has better guns than me. So I've, that's my personal opinion. I think there, uh, Hayate could definitely win a one-on-one -on -one gunfight with uh, Kassard. Kassard, again, is not designed for that role. It's designed to see what you're doing right here is that long-range torpedo uh, spamming kind of uh, style while still having the ability to provide some gun power for a limited amount of time and then also to get out of dodge and run away. Notice that full health, these guns are only doing about 3.1 seconds, which is not ideal for me. I'd like it to have sub-3-second reloads. So, again... Not the greatest. Now, here's that reload. Okay, pause right here. You can see why this Aslane mod is so, so important. If you did not know a Wooster would, had 10 kilometer radar, again, I just know that from just playing the game long enough. Again, it requires a PhD level of learning sometimes. I look at the, the map, at the beginning of the map, I hit tab. I select a which which cruiser has radar. Oh, I noticed the Wooster has it. You can click on it. You can see you guys nine kilometer radar. Um, the Wooster, also you can see right here, I have the threat indicator on my mini map. This circle is a nine kilometer circle, which visually gives me where I'm at right here. See, notice that I'm right here outside of that ring. Again, I've always said, as I instructed, sight travels faster than thought. I don't have to think about numbers, and I just look at the screen, go, I'm outside that circle, I'm good, right? That's my personal opinion on that. All right, uh, oh, here we go. So let's see, actually, let's take a look if we can do this one-on-one -on -one gumbo. Okay, now here's the disadvantage of bad on Hayate. He knows in, so his angles are off, so the back turrets of his guns are like ours, that he has to expose more and more damage to uh, get all guns on board, which reveals more ship for me, more ship for me, means more ship for me to hit. So let me see if I'm actually doing pretty darn well right here. So the fact that he can only get his front turret gun up and his teammates are not there to support him, I can win this engagement. So they're right there. I was able to take on the engagement. Notice that his shells took a little bit longer to do damage on me with that French saturation, and we won that gun battle. So again, right there, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about that engagement right there against the Hayate? So was that... Uh, something that was comfortable for you? Did you think that was okay? Would you have taken that battle one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, again, situational uh, dependent upon, okay, what what was causing that uh, gun battle and who had the advantage right there? De definitely us, since he was basically bottlenecked into a, a choke point. He basically had to expose a lot of his uh, ship, and then he ran aground and then re basically... Uh, took out his back turrets out of the game, and we had superior firepower at that moment right there. Again, let me know your thoughts. That was just sheer positioning right there and just understanding, hey, do I take this or not? Now that the enemy destroyer is gone, we are the only destroyer over. And notice that just us alone over here can hold an entire flank if their enemy destroyer goes down. For some reason, in World of Warships, players just go dumb and nil 
when all of a sudden they have no destroyer to help them at all and they just somehow shut down it's just almost as if as if their ship just does not function without a destroyer it's funny how that works and uh, i'll talk more about that why i think again i've already done a video about talking about the class system in world of warships and why i think it's it just does it's so difficult it makes the game too reliant upon one class because if one guy goes down it could literally take out an entire team and that's sad. I don't think that should be because now it's not dependent upon player skill. It's just dependent upon now your class just sucks, right? So, I don't know. That's my thought on it. Uh, I, I think they need to do something better about the gameplay of, uh, of objectives or the point of the game, uh, especially when like one submarine or one carrier can hold off an entire flank and area. That doesn't seem right, right? Um, all right, Wooster right here. It's a counter to us. So we got the raid nine kilometer radar threat. So we're not going to play this. We're going to kind of run away. We've already got the cap. Where does my team meet right now? I look at the mini map. I'm going, huh? Hopefully my battleship eventually will some, at some point come help me. Uh, he's, uh, moving forward here. Let me just speed up the video. So Richard Lou is probably hopefully coming to help me out with the Wooster, but I'm not going to stick around and play with that Wooster. Let's go back to Bravo. Our team is slowly losing ships here, so we're going to need to do something to help out Bravo Cap. Bravo Cap. Okay, so we got the Drake. I don't think we can take on a Drake as well, but maybe we can torpedo. Okay, here we go. We're taking on a Z-46. He's got Hydro, I believe, right? Yeah, anything with Z, I always assume they have Hydro until later on I figure that out. So we're, we're taking a one-on-one -on -one gun battle. Notice his guns are not doing as much damage to us than we are to him. There's his hydro, so we got to get out. So we got to do, we hit the engine boost, get out of dodge. We launch preemptive torpedoes into him. He's got hydro. He knows they're coming. So let's see how fast he can dodge these things. I'm just blind firing because he's got me a hydro. Why not just take the shot because he's free shots, right? See if I can blind fire him smoke. All right. Hopefully we get the torpedo hit. Come on, baby. Does it work? Let me see where the torpedo's at. Oh, we get him. One torpedo takes him out. Z-46 goes down, and we nail him like that. I mean, that is so, so difficult right there. Uh, so we get 26,000 damage, and yeah, hopefully... Man, I was so pissed off at this moment right here. I was like, come on, team. Somebody blow up this rooster for me. Somebody kill him. Do we survive this? See that French saturation? It just nerfs the guns of our enemy opponents because it's... It just, it just doesn't allow them to kill and take maximum damage as most other destroyers would absorb all that damage. Somehow these French destroyers, man, they do survive. Like I said, it is a very, very good survivable ship. Uh, and those are your defensive capabilities right there. You can see right out of the bat. Run away. Don't want to deal with it and just get out of dodge. I think this game is pretty much over. I mean, nobody's helping me. And uh, yeah, Richelieu's still in the back. Whatever, surviving, doing whatever he's got to do. There are the torpedoes. You know what? I might as well just, since all of our caps were lost, we pretty much lost this game. Uh, there's nothing else I think my team could do at this point. So why not just rush and take somebody and, uh, oh, actually, I'm spotting the Awami for my team. So we can at least do something here. We can spot for our team. That's why destroyer players are so, so good, uh, because you are the ones out there spotting without uh, being detected. So that's a good thing. Torpedoes are sometimes difficult to aim at because you're not really sure where this guy's going to go. I'm just kind of like, you know, assuming where he's going, predicting. It's like, hey, is he going to turn left or turn right around this island? What would I do? So I'm still capping the spot. So, wow, I did my job. Wow, I'm still in this fight. Okay, I have 651 health left. I'm in this fight. I'm capping. And uh, definitely the speed comes into play. 46 knots, max speed, as you can see right there. Torpedoes can still... Ooh, finally. Midway takes out Veneto. Ooh, this game literally just turned around just like that. We are now in a winning mode right here. So let's see if we can take this cap and win this for our team right here. Again, why do we need to be the lasting destroyer player? Because this is exactly why. You need to survive the long haul so that eventually you can come back and take the objectives. Now, here's the problem. We are facing a carrier that can have unlimited amount of planes and spot us from Kingdom Come and over and over again. Here's, a, here's an example of the AA here. We're up to about 4,000 HP. But again, we're playing against an Essex. Really difficult to kill. AA is not the greatest. We don't even have defensive fire here. And uh, yeah, it's we're doing the best we can here. I'm going to show full broadside to this bomber because, again, his torpedoes come out in line. We might as well minimize the damage by coming out full broadside. And he does not elect to uh, drop right there, so I'm surprised about that one. We take the cap, and now he is running. Oh, he's trying to get a better torp run on, or sorry, bomb run on us. He's trying to get that long profile. Yep, he's coming back around. So I'm going to go perpendicular to him, making sure I get that full uh, broadside to him because the bombs come out in a straight line. Let's see here. At least we can max minimize the amount of bombs that come on us. There's a straight line of bombs, and ouch. Yeah, no way you can really defend against that when he gets, gets that perfect drop. RNG takes over, and we lose that battle. Let's see if our team can actually win this engagement. Um, I was actually kind of uh, almost scared that we were going to lose this thing. So let's take, I'm just kind of curious how this ends up again. 
finally a Richard Liu comes out and he gets torped. Wow. All right. All that work for that. And uh, Iwami takes the cake right there with torpedoes from a battleship, by the way. That's pretty cool. And let's see. Whoa. Actually, what happens here? Iwami's just sitting in the back and they're losing the game by points here. Let's see. Oh, actually, they're winning. Remember, the, the points are backwards. So we actually have to kill this guy or they catch up to us. So let's see. What does my team actually end up doing? Torpedoes. Shimakaze actually wants to take this guy one-on-one. -on -one. Pretty ballsy right there. Rochester won't be able to take him on. Oh, finally, the carrier gets taken out by the other carrier in a uh, <laughs> secondary dual engagement. That's pretty funny. Carrier versus carrier. And, ooh, these torpedoes are good. And boom, there he goes. Way to go. That's how we win the game. Thank God we survived right there. Because we survived and we kept HP, we kept the fight to the enemy, it pressured them to make some crazy decisions. Again, you always have to try to stay alive as long as you can as a destroyer so that you never know when that final kill will actually help out your team right there. Let's see how we did in Kassar. I noticed that a lot of my games, I was in the top, uh, definitely top five, and uh, definitely in the other games were top two and top uh, three. Uh, we did a lot of damage. 20,000 HP er, damage on the Essex, which didn't feel like it did anything. Uh, we did it, man, that, that kill on that Z46 was just clutch right there. Just torping him at the last moment just, just saved us. Uh, we did a lot of work, a lot of potential damage. I'm, I'm saying if you're getting that million potential damage, you're a pretty good, um, annoying destroyer right there. So overall, what do I think of this, uh, destroyer line? Uh, I've played, uh, the Araj tier nine. It's okay. It's kind of like almost Gassard. Do I like a start? Absolutely. I like it for that torpedo roll, like a gearing play style, and maybe even Shimakaze, borderline Shimakaze play style. Uh, a little bit better guns than Shima, decent guns like gearing. Not a gunboat destroyer at all. Not a good hunter killer. It's really there to go out, spot, cap, and torpedo from distance. So that's my thought on it. Let me know what your thoughts. As always, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support. As always, thanks for you guys for uh, tuning in and watching us. And I uh, hope I see you out there. If you see me out there, say hi, say hello, and I hope you stay safe. And uh, until next time. Uh, you guys stay uh, safe and we'll see you soon. Cheers.